Hello and welcome to another Out of Spec Reviews video and welcome to the 2021 BMW 540i xDrive. This is the new LCI xDrive uh, 540i on the G30 chassis. In this video we're going to go through an in-depth driving uh, analysis basically. It sounds really boring. Maybe it is pretty boring, but we get super nerdy about all the little niggles and stuff about driving this car. It really helps uh, for these videos, I think, if you're going to be buying a 540i to understand how the car drives in the city, shredding up a canyon. You know, this a BMW needs to perform pretty well. So let's get right into it. And let's start by talking about this particular 5 Series. So this is the 540i xDrive, which means it has the turbocharged inline six cylinder B58 engine with the xDrive all wheel drive system. Now, uh, this B58 engine is supplemented with 48 volt mild hybrid technology. So you have 335 horsepower, 332 pound feet of torque, it's higher than that, by the way. Uh, BMWs, I think, they're just really underrating their stuff. Uh, that's closer to the power at the wheels. And, and my butt dyno, especially up here at altitude, this thing feels quick. Now, there's a ton of technology going on. You know, BMW's Bavarian Motor Works, they are literally a combustion engine manufacturing company. This is what they are the best at, and their new turbocharged B-series engines are some of the best. They're extremely refined, extremely technological, valve tronic, variable valve, you know, everything that you can imagine. Uh, but they also do altitude boost compensation and hot weather boost compensation. Uh, you know, one of the sayings is you can never catch an M5 on the Autobahn and part of that's because you know on a cold winter day pretty much uh, you know you can you can run with anything anything can keep up with an M5 but when it's 95 degrees outside everything's hot and heat soaked M5 still just shred because they can do really good cooling good boost compensation and same can be said with this 540i the baby version of course of the M5 there's a a 530i a 530e plug-in hybrid the 540i that's this one sort of right in the middle then you get an M550i xDrive, which might be the sweet spot. And then there's the full Big Daddy M5 that is just freaking rad. But a lot of the technology that comes from the M division is, is baked down here. So, so we know the engine's going to be good. We're going to play around with that. 4.6 seconds to 60 in this particular car. Uh, xDrive 4.9 for the rear wheel drive. And I've tested this at 5.1 with two people in the car, full tank of fuel, and high altitude. So again, to lose about half a second up here at 5,000 feet of elevation, 5,500, it's really not bad at all, especially with, with two people in the car. Uh, car weighs 4,159 pounds, 55% of the weight is on the front, 45 on the rear. So we're going to have to see how this car handles. Is it going to be too soft? It's really heavy. It's quite large, of course. So let's play around with it and let's go for a drive in the city. Now there's three main driving roads, Comfort, Sport, and Eco Pro. We're going to be driving in Comfort here in the town. And backing up, I have a gorgeous uh, 360 degree view camera. There's uh, blind spot monitoring and I should say rear crash traffic alert as well so if a car was coming down the street it would alert you when they start coming and you're backing up really good system another neat feature here that we saw in the 330e we recently tested if you're a viewer of our channel is uh, the the feature called backup assistant where the car will remember the last 50 yards of your driving as long as you're below 20 miles an hour and it will basically play back exactly what you did in reverse so if you have a really complicated parking spot for example and you need to just like I don't know, zigzag in, the car will just do the exact same zigzag out. It's a really good feature, and I put a video on TikTok with the 330E demonstrating this, so make sure you go take a look if you're interested. Um, uh, uh, also, a feature I do really like about this car is it has a built-in dash cam. So uh, similar to like uh, Tesla vehicles, you know, you see these Tesla cam videos popping up everywhere. Well, BMW has it too uh, here in this car. All I do is I push and hold the little panoramic view camera down here and it will save the previous 20 seconds and the next 20 seconds. So you get a 40 second recording of the event. I also have it set in this particular car to go off if there's an accident detected. So I, I really love that feature. That should be in almost every car. And then of course you can offload the footage onto a USB drive, which is great. Another neat feature about the uh, new BMWs in general is their whole user profile situation. What you do when you get into a BMW for the first time is you get all your settings 
settings set up, and then you save this to a profile through the cloud, through your phone, and then you get in any other BMW, you just log in and everything's the same. It remembers your seating position, your sound settings, your everything. So the trick here is to find the highest spec BMW at your dealership. Find like a seven series with everything. Spec it all the way, you know, get it, get everything set the way you want it, heads up display, driver assistance stuff, and then you can get in any BMW trim below and it will just retain those settings. It's a really neat feature. Uh, BMW has been doing this for a while with USB drives and iDrive. I I remember I actually used to work at a BMW dealership in college and uh, we would program everyone's profile to their USB stick and then when they'd come in to get their loaner cars, we'd plug it out of their car, put it in the loaner and all of their settings would be there. It's a great feature and now it's just done remotely. And these are, uh, these are really, really cool things. So keep an eye on our TikTok. There's some other neat things that we're highlighting as well. For example, you can set the driver's window to roll down at a GPS set location. At first I was like, that's really dumb. I can just hit the switch. But then it's like, I go to Starbucks every morning and I roll down my window in the exact same spot to order my coffee. And uh, well, my pink drink, of course, that is now becoming a, a famous thing, whatever. People run into me on the street and they're like, what is the drink that you have in your videos? I'm like, that's pretty funny. Um, you know, you, the, where it really works though is like if you work in an office building where you have to tap a card to get in a garage, well, it just rolls down every day. It's just, it seems over-engineered, but they're actually solving problems that exist. I think it's really kind of a cool thing. So enough about the five series. By the way, this one specced out to nears makes no difference, $80,000. It's like 78, 100. And um, I don't have the window sticker on me, but it has uh, pretty much every option except full leather. Uh, so the dashboard is this Sensatec uh, sort of, maybe not even, it's kind of this hard material. Honestly, the dash isn't that nice nor are these upper uh, door cards here. I wish that the car had leather everywhere. I know you can spec it, so that's just an optional thing. And then no massaging seats in this one, which I was really hoping it would have because I think it's kind of needed. You get these headrests. I don't know if you can see that kind of grip your head like, a, like an airline seat, which is really nice. You can adjust not only just the backrest of the chair, but also the angle of the top of the uh, backrest. BMW has been doing this forever again. And I just love the adjustability on these sports seats. They're super nice, beautiful leather. I think this is all merino leather with this white piping, absolutely gorgeous. And uh, honestly, no complaints there whatsoever. So uh, enough about all, all of that in the car and everything. Let's talk about how this drives in the city. So we have, again, that uh, uh, three liter inline six cylinder engine engine and that is sort of the classic BMW sedan luxury business sedan combination you have an inherently balanced engine a straight six where when one cylinder goes up you have another one that is going in the opposite direction so they're extremely smooth um, and then we have the addition of 48 volt mild hybrid boost now I've driven this engine in tons of different cars they put it in everything it's a stellar engine same engine in the Supra actually the B58 but now we have this electric starter motor generator it's a belt driven system that 48 volt so what that that means is you can do extended period of time with the engine off at a stop. Oh, I'm setting off the gesture control. <laughs> setting off the gesture control here because I'm talking with my hands. Hold on, I gotta turn her off. Let's go. Voice guidance, map, voice guidance, uncheck, cancel route. Um, yeah, probably if I had one of these, I'd turn off the, the gesture control. It's kind of neat. You can turn up and down the volume like this, um, but, it, but it doesn't work in practice. So. 48 volt mild hybrid system. You have the the starter motor that is a belt starter. So when you come to a stop, for example, and you're in auto start stop uh, uh, situation, the engine can stay off for prolonged periods of time. And then when you lift off of the brake pedal, you don't use the physical starter motor, you just use this integrated starter motor generator and it starts everything up. And uh, this does a couple things where you know, basically it's just gonna remove the wear and tear of a starter motor because it doesn't care. The starter generator, the, the belt driven system can just do this forever. So there's actually no mode to even turn off auto start stop in the five series. Uh, every BMW up until the mild hybrids, you've been able to disable auto start stop. But now that you're using the belt driven starter motor, the car will just determine when it wants to start stop or not. Again, I'm setting off gesture control. Uh, however, when you select sport mode, the car will no longer 
use uh, start stop. It'll just keep the engine idling. Also in sport mode, it increases the brake regeneration off throttle. So when I lift off the accelerator pedal, you kind of get a hint of like an EV uh, deceleration force, which I think is quite nice. Um, but I don't like driving around in sport mode because it just makes everything too taut and, and spicy. And uh, I think that that doesn't fit the character of the 5 Series around town. Interesting, we need to talk about the uh, eight-speed sport Steptronic uh, transmission updated again for 2021 with new uh, 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 stabilizer shafts inside the transmission. Uh, the torque converter will now lock up quicker and more smoothly, and so there's just less vibrations. Optimized hydraulic control, of course, for gear shift preciseness. So everything here is smooth and optimized, and honestly, I do feel the difference. Uh, I've spent quite a bit of time in the previous generation 5 Series, or I should say the pre-LCI, the dot one of this G30 chassis, and I am super impressed with the calibration on this transmission. Now, it's able to actually utilize all of that down low grunt that this engine has. Again, peak torque is under 1500 RPM, but also with this 48 volt system, uh, you get a plus 11 horsepower and I don't, I, BMW doesn't give you the torque factor that it actually gives you on the output shaft of the transmission, but with all the reductions, it's gotta be over 100 pound feet of torque extra. So if you're seeing this, we're climbing a small hill, we're just sitting at 1100 RPM. So this thing will upshift at 1200, which I've just never experienced before in a BMW. The calibration is designed to really have this car sit at a very low RPM range. Now the transmission will also base its shift points off of map data and even radar data from the car in front. So if you're approaching a vehicle, it will downshift preemptively to scrub speed with engine braking, which is really neat. It will also, if you're coming up to some corners, not upshift and hold the higher revs so that there's less uh, interruption during driving. But look, we're literally sitting at a thousand RPM at Tickover, cruising at 45 miles an hour. Truly impressive stuff here in terms of low end grunt and just utilizing the, the 48 volt mild hybrid electric boost motor uh, that gives you sort of like an EV-like instant torque character, plus the uh, the balance of a inline six to just run the engine at basically idle means you, you would have no idea that anything's over under stress right now. It's really good around town, very comfortable. Suspension calibration in this particular car with adjustable dampers is sublime, of course. Now, I will say, I think the A6 is smoother than this car, and definitely the E-Class is smoother. And personally, I just tested the new E450 Formatic, the E-Class, which is the direct competitor to this vehicle. Engine choice, Formatic, all-wheel drive, uh, X-Drive here in this particular car. I mean, literally as close as you can match them up. Similar options too. And I would go for the E-Class. Just personally, I love the interior design more. I, look, I'm a BMW guy through and through, but I really thought that that E-Class was put together extremely well. The calibration was great, and I thought the engine uh, was smoother even uh, at lower revs. At higher revs, this engine's much more keen to rev and more fun to uh, more fun to drive. So this car will shine in the canyons compared to the E-Class, which was impressive in the canyons. If you watch that video, I did a whole yeah again 45 minute long video on that car evaluating its driving performance, so you can get a good back to back. But, um, yeah, I have to say around town that E-Class was really something special and it had neat technology like augmented reality navigation as well as uh, really good um, uh, stoplight systems where when you pull up to a traffic light, it would show you on the screen a video of the traffic light in real time so you don't have to look around. These little things, while the BMW has their things, the Mercedes has theirs, and I thought the Mercedes uh, features were a little bit more useful around town. So here we are coming up to some of the canyon roads up in a little bit, but I do want to finish off the around town driving, just talking about the spaciousness of the cabin, the turning radius, and overall vibe of the car. Engine cold startups, awesome, get in, go right away. These BMW engines don't even need warm up time anymore. They just like to be run at, at light load when they're fresh, so that's pretty nice. Um, space in the 5 Series, it's really the right size to cruise in, uh, maybe on the highway. It might be a little big around town, it's very wide. Um, but it gives you that sort of bank vault light luxury feeling that you would expect in a car in this category. Look again, pulling up this hill at 1300 RPM, just truly impressive. I found myself just pulling the downshift paddle a couple times because I'm like, let me hear this thing work. <laughs> And an inline six just sounds so good, just over 2,000 RPM. So 
uh, size wise, plenty of room in the back, great trunk space, the seats fold down. Watch our walk around video that will be launching before this video is live, where I go on an in-depth tour of the 5 Series, uh, not driving, just features and, and spaciousness where you can get a good idea of that. But for now, let's put the car into Sport Plus mode and we'll hit some of the canyons. And welcome to the base of the canyons where it's a Sunday morning, we're gonna have quite a bit of traffic, so I don't expect us to shred too hard, but we're just letting some traffic get ahead right now. I have uh, dialed up here the sport displays, which consist of turbo boost pressure, oil temperature, horsepower, and torque. Again, 335 horsepower, 332 pound-feet of torque, but it's a very conservative 335 horsepower. This thing freaking moves. Uh, what else do we have? We have everything dialed up into Sport Plus right now. I have dynamic traction control on, and uh, that basically will allow a little bit of slip. We'll see if we end up turning that off throughout the drive. Normally, I do. Uh, dynamic traction control is good, but it still gets in the way if you want to really get the car, uh, get some angle here on the car. We have a brake pedal that will do a little bit of blending as well. So electrically controlled brake pedal that we need to make sure the calibration is accurate, that the force that I'm putting in matches the deceleration forces of the car. It's either not too snappy or too soft. Uh, BMW's always had good brake pedal feel, but they've always been relatively under braked in terms of performance. So we'll test some of that here for sure. We have lights on for safety, of course, and now we're just letting a lot of uh, room go with cars in front of us, uh, you know, basically just letting everyone get up ahead. No one's behind us, so we'll chill out and I'll let you know when we're ready to go. And let's do it, launch control, full foot on the brake, flooring it with the right, launch control active, off we go. Oh, it launches so hard, slams second gear, slams third gear, we're already into big speeds here. Man, does it just get up and go. But the squat and dive under braking. Brake pedal feels really good. Had a little hint of ABS in there too. Whoa, into first. I really wanted second gear there. Sounds great when you rev it all the way out, doesn't it? Just really nice BMW straight six noise. We're gonna go slow. I see a bicycle, bicyclist, and then we'll get on the power coming up this way. Nice turn in as well. This one has the adaptive steering option, which will allow for variable ratio. Cows, you can never drive past cows without saying cows. If you can, then you're not a good human being. <laughs> wow, a lot of bicyclists up here. So early upshifts, you get a little nice bit of a fart noise out the exhaust that I actually really like. Foot hard down, riding that torque wave. Man, does this thing put the power down so nicely. Listen to the noise. Just that mid-range grunt. E-boost. It'll even come on when it's when you're doing electric boost from the 48 volt system. Now in Sport Plus, it tries to keep the 48 volt topped up as much as possible. So we're getting as much regen when we lift off the accelerator pedal to charge up the battery, and it just says e-boost every single time. Now there's, oh, there's something weird going on here though, guys. Uh, I'm trying to figure out how to explain this to you. And I don't think it has to do with the e-boost, although it's possible. It almost feels like when you have the wheels turned, you get a torque limit. So coming out of this corner, yeah. And it might be the e-boost. Let's take a look. Maybe not. Oh, you get a nice little red line upshift indicator that flashes in the heads up display. So here's what's happening. I think it's separate from e-boost. I think it has to do more with xDrive than e-boost. So it feels like when you have steering angle on the front wheels, of course, you get a boost limitation. Like it doesn't give you full power. Look, foot down, it's like slow. And then as soon as I get the wheel straight, yeah, whoa. Big, big torque limitation here uh, under, under steering wheel lock. This is very odd. Um, so basically coming out of a corner foot down, yeah, it only gives you power in a straight line. Now, this car is on Pirelli Soto Zero winter tires, and we do have traction in dynamic traction mode. So let's turn everything off, see if that solves the problem. But I, I've felt a few cars that do torque limitation based on gear and based off of steering angle. This is definitely a steering angle limitation, but that torque, I mean, it's got a lot of torque. 
It just really wants you to be straight, which is such an un-BMW-like characteristic. Uh, BMWs have always been really great rear bias systems. Again, this X-Drive is a rear bias system with a uh, basically a multi-clutch, wet clutch in the transfer case to send power to the front wheel. So it should, in theory, send most of its power to the back so you can get out of a corner pivot the car and then it should blend in the front axle. It doesn't do that. It's a very neutral balance system, which is okay, uh, but but this torque limitation thing is a little odd. So uh, let's put that on hold until we get this truck out of our way and then we'll, we'll try that a little bit more with DSC off. Uh, in terms of engine, stellar. One of the all-time best engines in history, I have to say. Truly an amazing, this B58 engine, the successor to the N55, is extremely more technical, seems to take a lot of power in the aftermarket, sounds really good. This particular 540i doesn't have all the pops and crackles tuned into it, but of course uh, you can have this engine calibrated for different platforms. Here it's in a much more comfort-oriented platform. Amazing fuel economy on the highway. Uh, overall, again, not enough good things to say about the power plant of this vehicle. I'd be very happy owning one of these engines as a daily uh, power plant source to move me around. It's, it really sounds great, feels great, amazing response to put your foot down at 2800 RPM, e-boost kicks on, and it goes. So no question that the power is, is good, the response is good, the noise, which is a highly underrated uh, you know, factor here in vehicles is incredible and that contributes to the fun of driving and yeah, the noise, just here, let's just rev it out really quick for a fun second gear. Just that awesome screaming straight six noise. Gotta love that. So good. Um, then we get to suspension. It's soft and it's roly poly, even in sport plus that we're in right here. Um, you know, very different than that 330E that we just sampled, which was also not an M car. Again, that was the plug-in hybrid. That one had the dynamic handling package. I don't know if this car does or not, can't remember. But anyway, uh, pretty soft calibration. I'm pretty sure this car does have all the sporty stuff. And look, power on out of the corner. No hint of oversteer, right in the power band, and yep, torque limitation again. So very odd uh, uh, situation here. And that kind of almost, does it kill the fun? because so much is good here. The steering is very direct. I like the ratio of the steering wheel, but the bushings in the steering rack itself feel rubbery. It's like I put in an input and then everything has to move over and turn. Now, this has a lot to do with tire selection as well. And again, we are on Pirelli Soto Zero winter tires. So I'd like to reserve judgment on the steering until I'm able to test one on a performance tire or a summer tire, like a Pilot Sport uh, uh, 4S, for example, would probably be the tire of choice on a car like this. And man, I love, love that e-boost uh, technology, love that mid-range torque curve, really awesome uh, performance, of course. Uh, braking pedal calibration is very nice and what I mean by that is when you touch the brake pedal it doesn't just slam on the brakes it has a really progressive pedal but it bites so you can you get the feeling that yes I have brakes to back you up but of course you hit this really nice hard limitation hard resistance point oh, I love the sound of this engine and uh, the brake pedal itself uh, is really good, especially for being an electronically controlled brake pedal. Everyone else, take notes, drive a 5 Series, and just copy and paste this brake pedal calibration into any plug-in hybrid battery electric vehicle because, again, this is doing regen blending. Not very much because, again, the 48-volt system might only be able to take a, you know, a few hundred watts into the system, but it's still an electronic pedal, and it's still calibrated really well. Um, yeah, lots of other stuff going on here as well. We have, you know, tons of different drive modes. There's an adaptive driving mode that should figure out what you're doing. Honestly, I just, Sport Plus all the way. Again, this not being a M40i and just a 40i, a 540i, means it doesn't have all the sporty calibrations on the engine and you just drive it in Sport Plus. But man, is it 
more than capable. Like if you had to take this to a track day, you could. Um, I've seen people take 540Is to a track day and they shred pretty hard. No, no question about the capability, just this weird torque limitation with this X-Drive system coming out of the corner. I would be interested to see how this e-boost situation handles over long periods of time. There is an energy flow calculation that'll show you the charge of the high voltage battery or mid voltage battery and this is uh, at two of five bars right now so we've burned a lot of it coming up the hill so the for the length of time that it's able to provide the e-boost that I don't know uh, that would be interesting to uh, to learn a little bit more about so overall really a fantastic uh, chassis itself geared more for comfort but in typical BMW fashion, you can still hustle it around, no question. Uh, doesn't complain about it from a chassis perspective. Drivetrain is stellar. Drivetrain calibration with the all-wheel drive system is poor with this torque limitation. And so, for me, if you had a rear-wheel drive 540i, that would solve all the problems, and I'm sure it would be an absolute blast up this road. Serious blast. And uh, it's just e-boosted up. You do feel the e-boost kicking in too. Like when you get the power and then you can get, the, you see the e-boost come on the screen, you get a nice shove. It does make a difference. I wonder how well that belt driven system will hold up over time. These are all things that will be uh, seen in five or 10 years when these come up on the used market. But have to say, if you're just looking for an everyday, daily driver, highway cruiser, business class sedan, that you may live in the mountains or want to go and have some fun occasionally or you're a keen driver uh, and you just want to be able to drive pretty quickly in your 5 Series sometimes, look no further, this car can do it all.